What's up you amazing hackers, there was this little fairy and you told me that you wanted to become a bug bounty hunter. Well I have 5 tips for you that will help you become a bad bug bounty hunter. So let's get right into it shall we. Let's start off at number 5, which is learn a programming language. There are a couple of programming languages that I would recommend. No, it's not necessary that you know a programming language before you become a bug bounty hunter, but it's highly recommended. So again, highly recommend some programming languages. First of all, Bash. Bash is really important because if you don't know Bash, you're going to have a lot of trouble navigating your own system. A lot of people hack on a Linux or a Mac OS machine and you want to be able to navigate really fast. You don't want to have to spend hours working out your, your script, spend hours working out which commands to use. It's really important that you know which commands to use and also your command line can be your best friend at times. Sometimes simple DNS queries can give you guys the best results. So highly recommend you learn Bash. Also recommend that you learn Python because Python is pretty much a Swiss army knife and it's sometimes I think it's made for hackers because there's so much stuff that you can just import and you can run. So um, you can you can like put together a really cool program in like a couple of minutes. That's that's why I really recommend Python. And there's also a third one which is optional and I would recommend maybe you learn like a web programming language like PHP, ASPX, you know, all that kind of stuff. You can learn one of those to know some of the vulnerabilities in there um, and maybe help you even become better at judging those vulnerabilities because you'll pick up some programming techniques along the way and you'll start to learn where uh, the points of failures can be and those points of failures is what we hackers attack so highly recommend that as well but of course it, it's, it's again it's optional if you don't want to do it it's, it's really up to you so um, that was number five on to number four which would be learn the basic content concepts of the web there are so many basic concepts that you need to know like for example what's a get request what's a post request what's a put what's an option and i don't mean just like get to you know the that the option is there that you know that you have post and a put and a get but i want you guys to go through all of the possible options and just read through them at least once and see what's there so you can be a better hunter in the future because some people only know for example a get and a post request but they completely ignore the put request which is also a valid request and which is oftentimes more vulnerable than the post request so I would learn those concepts, maybe some cookies, um, learn what they do, authorization, headers, all of the headers, learn about the flags on cookies, like cookies have four different flags that you can set on them, and you all have some different options, learn about content security policy, all that kind of stuff. Now, on to number three, which would be pick a program and stick to it. Now, this one is very important to me because if you want to become really good at bug bounty hunting you cannot just go for those low hanging fruits you have to really dig deeper and if you really want to dig deeper i have a complete video about that card's going to be up here somewhere so if you want to see that go click on it i'll wait <laughs> i'll promise <laughs> anyway um if you really want to dig deep you're going to have to get to know your application you're going to first of all have to know what it's written in what programming language what architecture it uses, where the weak points are and how you can attack them. And don't forget guys, every couple of weeks a, a program, a target will bring out an update because they have to, especially in these days, everybody's going agile. So um, if you really stick to a program, you, you get to test those regressions and those are often vulnerable as well. So again, pick a program, stick with it. On to number two to me, which we we pick a vulnerability and stick to it as well. If you are starting out, if you're really just starting out, I would highly recommend that you just explore all the vulnerabilities out there. But that if you're really starting out, you're not ready to become a bug bounty hunter yet. So you really have to be, uh, what I mean by that is if you really have to explore all the vulnerabilities still, maybe you should do that first before you really dive dive head first into your first program now um, 
I would highly recommend that you explore all those vulnerabilities and that you pick one because uh, if you really get into one of those vulnerabilities you get to know what it's like you get to uh, experience some of the, the deeper parts of those vulnerabilities for example I really like cross-site scripting you can learn about web filter uh, application web application filter uh, evasions that kind of stuff uh, I like idors you can learn about shading those kinds of things but I would highly recommend that you pick some vulnerabilities that you really like, maybe one or two or a couple, uh, especially if you're just starting out and you explore them more deeply than you would explore the other vulnerabilities. So that was my second tip on to number one, which would be POC or get the fuck out. This is the one I d that I really stand by and I've made this mistake myself a couple of times even. Um, I've reported a vulnerability like for example there might be a vulnerable version of some software that they are hosting and I'll report that vulnerability without creating a proof of concept now those reports of course are not valid you have to have a proof of concept and you have to prove that there is impact because the reports that I made there wasn't even a proof of concept available for that vulnerability specifically so that's why I would I was thinking uh, I would report it like I would just report it but that's a terrible idea because if there's another proof of concept available there's not a, there's not a vulnerability it's as simple as that you still can't get in and if you really think it's vulnerable you should write your own proof of concept of these CVEs like they have a really really high bonus on them as well so if you can write your proof of concept for that report it over there and also of course report it to the CVE because you get your bonus there as well so that's also a, a side tip I can give you guys I guess I hope you guys had some value from this episode because that's what I try to do I try to bring a lot of value in each episode if you did leave me a comment below because I would really like to know if you guys get value from these episodes Thank you guys so much for watching everybody and also thank you everybody who always comments, who's always there, who's always in the Discord channel. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for my Patreons. I really, really like you. Um, one thing I want to tell you guys still is that I have a sticker action going on. I still have one sticker left, so it's just one sticker. If you anybody wants to buy it, it's $5. Uh, I've already sold... 13 stickers so uh, I will be if you guys like the stickers there will be a link in the description if you like them uh, I'll buy some new ones and get some new uh, supplies so I can send them to you guys I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one bye everybody